It's a squirrel. It's a bird. It's a kite? No, it's the vegetarian night stalker of Southeast Asia. Today, we're in the primate uncanny valley. We have so much in common with these wide-eyed weirdos, but we're also so different. They glide, they have comb teeth, and they're five times lighter than your head. What mysteries do they hold? And what can we learn from them? This is the strangest almost primate in the world, the Kalugo. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. Kalugos are a bit of an evolutionary anomaly. But before we talk about their strange lineage, I want to tell you a little bit about today's episode's sponsor. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that lets you try a new designer fragrance for just $17 a month. Being a science communicator takes me to some very interesting places, and I always feel most confident when I'm also looking and smelling my best. Today, I'm wearing Moss Bold by Commodity. It comes in a pretty big vial that easily lasts the whole month. I chose this one because it smells like bergamot and eucalyptus, and kind of reminds me of being out in a eucalyptus forest in Australia, filming koalas. I've tried a few other fragrances over the past couple of months, and my favorites are Celestial Patchouli and St. Bart's Seascape by Tommy Bahama. Celestial Patchouli is a subtle scent with notes of cedar and roses, perfect for work. And St. Bart's Seascape is a more aromatic fragrance, which I like to wear to social events. This isn't a mystery box service. Scentbird lets you pick what you get every month. They have over 600 fragrances and colognes with lots of unisex options, so make sure you try a couple to find out which ones work best for you. If you live in the USA or Canada, use my coupon code ANIMALOGIC for 55% off at scentbird.com. It's just over $7 for your first month. And now, back to the cutest rodent primate mishmash, the Kalugo. Kalugos are sort of the mutant love child of a tarsier and flying squirrel. Their lifestyle is pretty similar to those of other gliding mammals, who mostly eat fruits and nuts and have evolved to jump from tree to tree. For small animals like these, the air is safer than the ground, which is swarming with carnivores. Flying squirrels are possibly the most well-known gliding mammals, but this is a successful strategy that has evolved independently several times over many different orders. In marsupials, gliding has evolved, among others, in the Pitoris genus, which includes sugar gliders and mahogany gliders, and the Petoroides genus, also known as the Great Gliders. There are also over 50 gliding rodent species around the world, with different species of flying squirrels making up most of them. The most charismatic of these are probably the Siberian flying squirrels. They are just way too cute. They always look like they're mustering up the courage to ask another flying squirrel out on a date. But Kalugos are different. There is something lemur-like to them, which initially earned them their nickname, the flying lemurs. That moniker is wrong, but not by much. DNA tests have shown that there are closest relatives outside of primates. If you don't really see a resemblance between a Kalugo and, say, a gorilla, it's because our evolutionary paths diverged during the Cretaceous, when dinosaurs were still hunting little mammals. That's a lot of time to change and adapt to new environments. There are only two remaining Kalugo species. The Philippine Kalugo lives in the southern Philippines, especially in the islands of Mindanoa and Bohol. This is the biggest of the two species, at just about 1.5 kilograms. It has a mottled coat and a wide face. They're kind of like the pit bulls of the Kalugos. And then there's the Sunda Kalugos, which live in Southeast Asia, from Thailand to Indonesia. They're a little smaller, have solid brown or ginger coats, and a much more delicate little face. They're basically Kalugo greyhounds. But let's stop beating around the Kalugo's bushy tail. You came here to see these puppies fly. Look at them go! Kalugos have a sort of built-in kite that extends from their wrists to their ankles. It's the maximum amount of coverage that you could have without growing giant wings like bats. 
Their squirrel suit is called the patagium, and it's made of leathery skin. On top of that, they have webbed feet that maximize the surface they have to glide. To travel between trees, they climb as high as possible and then jump. With their patagium fully outstretched, they can glide for up to 200 meters, but jumps of 20 or 30 meters are most common. As you can imagine from their shape, Kalugos are not great walkers. Climbing and gliding are their two main methods of transportation, and falling to the ground can be deadly. Southeast Asia is teeming with predators. While on the tree canopy, Philippine eagles are the greatest threat. But on the ground, several small cat species, as well as foxes, dogs, and doles can easily catch a colugo. And so, their entire evolutionary history consists of adaptations to help them traverse the forests by climbing and gliding, and doing it at night when there's no birds of prey around. Have you ever walked in a forest at night without a lamp on? It's terrifying. Colugos do that every night while jumping into the void. Their huge eyes come equipped with giant retinas that give them the night vision and depth perception needed for their leaps. Weirdly, despite being nocturnal, they're thought to have some color vision. Primate color vision evolved after we split off from Kalugos, but it seems the building blocks were there already, and the ability to see ripe fruit from afar evolved in both orders independently. Besides predators and gravity, the Kalugos' biggest problem is rough landings on trees. But wouldn't you know it, they also have adaptations to protect themselves and their babies from harsh landings. They have an inbuilt gyroscope that helps them control their speed along the X and Y axis. When they're in glide mode, they're almost perfectly horizontal, so they don't descend as quickly. But when they're about to reach their destination, they swivel themselves upwards. This slows them down on the X axis, but makes them fall more quickly. So they have to do it at just the right time so that they don't fall to the predator-rich floor. With all the predators around, it's too dangerous to leave the babies alone in the nest. So mom takes them wherever she goes. Kalugo babies are born underdeveloped, almost as underdeveloped as marsupial babies. From birth, they attach themselves to the mom's belly. The mom uses her tail to build a little pocket for the babies, making a pseudo pouch or baby carrier. And so, moms will carry the babies for months while she's out foraging, and will slowly introduce them to solid foods. Kalugos have a really well-developed digestive system, as they need to eat a lot of fiber. When available, the majority of their meals are fruit salads, with the occasional lichen dessert to get extra minerals. In times of scarcity, they chew on ants, bark, leaves, and other plant matter. Their comb-like teeth have the dual purpose of stripping away hard materials, like lichens and tough skin of some fruits, and being a pretty efficient brush to groom themselves to get rid of ticks and other parasites. Partly because of this diet, Kalugos are known to have a very high parasitic load in their guts. It's so bad that their feces have been reported to move around due to the sheer number of worms in it. But don't worry, we're not going to show you that. Or are we? No, we're not. <laughs> Both Kalugo species are considered least concern due to their large range. But there is actually some concern due to the rapid deforestation of the region. Kalugos live in areas that are quickly developing. There are simply fewer trees, and those that are still there are more spread apart. In some areas, roads are being built, which brings the additional danger of being run over by cars. There is a current initiative to protect Kalugo populations by building gliding posts, which are basically utility poles in the middle of the forest or alongside roads. Kalugos can use them as platforms and shorten the distance between trees. We're still learning about Kalugos, and with the conservation projects in place, we're hoping we can see these little guys thrive. Thanks Scentbird for sponsoring this episode. Check the links in the description. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thank you for watching. See ya!